Hi guys, I'm Shmi, hello, and welcome back to the channel where today we are taking 10 of the cars from my collection to one single event. We're heading over to Petrol Hedonism Live, and this is gonna be quite the logistics exercise. We're gonna be taking quite a few of the cars from here at the Museum, and the last time we did something like this was when we moved the cars here in the first place. But a couple of years ago, I took six cars to an event in the Netherlands, including the GT and the Senna. Well, those are going to be coming over today, along with a variety of the others, and I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna be driving, which order we're gonna do this, and that's what we need to work out. But 10 of the cars, plus Brad's Arbath 124, plus the Cupra to get us backwards and forwards. Let's see if we can do this. It's gonna be a complicated one. Fingers crossed it's gonna go fine, but let's do this. It's time to go set up for Petrol Hedonism Live. I've just been making a little bit of a note on how I want to go about this, which cars to take in which order. And for the first run, I actually want to drive the original Schmiemobile, my V8 Vantage Roadster, because that's where it all began. It feels like that will be a nice place to start. So we'll take that car in the first run. We'll take the GT8. We'll take the 675 LT Spider, and we'll take the C63. In the second run, we'll probably then take the STO, come back over to this side, we'll take the Elise, we'll take the SLS Black Series, and we'll take the SF90 Stradale. And that of course means for the final run, we'll be taking Brad Zabath and we'll be taking the GT and the Senna. I think that adds up to 10 cars in total. Now I'm gonna let you know as we go, which I'm gonna be driving of the other runs, but I've got a bit of a plan behind that as well. Now to get ready this far, we've had to clean and prepare all of the cars to get everything completely ready. A big shout out to Brad and Tom at the Museum for washing all of them over the last two days or so to make sure we're set for this. We were praying that it wasn't gonna be raining. This morning it was, it's drying up nicely outside and we're heading over to Nebworth House where the cars are going to be on display for the two days or so of the weekend. It's a fantastic event. Last year, the SLS Black Series was there on the AMF stand, the approved motor finance stand. This year, they've kindly set up a whole area to meet with some of you guys and to show you all of the cars as well. So we need to grab some keys, we need to get all the radios, get everybody lined up, get everything started up, unplugged, ready to be taken on out to start this drive over to Petrol Hedonism Live. First up, V8 Vantage Roadster. I think for those of you who have been following for the long term, this was of course the original, the first car I ever talked to a camera on a video, the first time that I ever really made road trip vlogs, adventures in this over 11 years ago. Time has flown by, but I've got a handful of some car keys. We need to obviously unplug these from the SeaTech smart chargers. All of the cars live on these things to make sure that we keep the batteries in good health, all as they should be. Let me come around. We'll get these started up one at a time kind of thing. Line them all up and get ready for the first run out. absurdly cool. We are making our way up the motorway in our little drive. I have the C63 right behind me. The GT8 is about to be coming alongside, then the 675 LT. Then we've got the Cupra as well. The squad lined up, driving in the OG Schmiemobile with its successor in so many ways with the GT8. <laughs> Remember I bought that car because of it being the ultimate last version of this which was my first proper sports car. I had an Audi S5 and my BMW 1 Series before, but this was really my first kind of serious machine when I bought it. And it was the original Schmiemobile. It was the car that really, this is actually ridiculously cool. And we have four V8s, I've just realized. This was the car that I first ever filmed and spoke to camera driving. I was sitting in this seat in this car about 11 years ago when I made a video on the channel and now taking it as part of the whole lineup with the whole gang. That's what's so cool about doing this. And obviously with the other guys driving the cars, just, I, there's nothing more fun than this kind of thing. And it's not the longest drive in the world out towards Nebworth House, but it's a really nice place. And obviously this is going to be a busy, busy event. Of course, we couldn't bring all of the cars. I know that it would have been lovely to have the Zembo there, the Clio V6, the GT500, various different things with the different cars. But nonetheless, to be able to bring over as many of them as we are today, 
is something pretty special and to have this little gathering together I, 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 I don't know you get a different perspective on cars when you see them on the road being driven from another car I know how much Tom is enjoying the noise of the GT8 <laughs> each and every time. Um, the beauty of heading in this direction is that at some point soon, we're going to have a bit of a tunnel. That's going to be fun. Here we go then, tunnel time, window down a touch, drop some gears, because of course, even in this car, it sounds awesome. This car alone sounds fantastic, but I'm going to pull out of the way because I think we all want to hear the noise of that as Tom comes by. <laughs> oh, madness, absolute madness. We're not getting the noises of the, uh, the Cooper though. No crazy Cooper sounds. We've got the C. Amazing. And then the 675 to be in sport mode to get the cracks. We have arrived, which means driving across the fairground area here, which is a little bumpy. This car, of course, has no ground clearance issues, but certainly we're gonna need the lift system up in the LT to head towards our designated space. You've got the whole event areas around, but we've got this basically tented area where we can take all of these cars and I'll work out exactly how I'm gonna park them up. But also here will be Richard Rawlings from Gas Monkey Garage, Freddy Tavares is here. Plenty of others have come over to be part of it. Eddie X, Rata Rossa, Hard Up Garage, loads of guys here. Okay, I think this is our space, so I'm gonna have to work out exactly which car I want to put where. I'm gonna do this the easy way and drive through from one side towards the other. That'll be the fun way to go about this. And then we'll park everything from there. This is our space. It is time to shuffle some cars around. The C is going to be taking part in some of the festivities, so that will hover slightly to the side. We're going to park the LT and the GT8 at this end. So GT8 there, LT there. That's step one with this. The Vantage will go down towards the opposite end and we'll work out how all of this is going to go. So Mark is piloting the 675. So let me come around the back and give a uh, Bit of hand guidance as to how to do this. We'll go straight for the moment. We've got all of our uh, little signals that make sense. Turn the wheel a little bit that way. For the time being then, GT8 dead straight back, dead straight, dead straight, dead straight. Not gonna hit anything, all good. A Little bit further and stop. Perfect. So those are good for the moment. Well, we will go and crack on with what is next. Vantage roads to coming through, bring it straight, bring it back this way, pivot, pivot that way, straight, stop. That'll do for now. We'll work it all out in a little bit. It's Cooper time, heading back to base in here. All right, ready to rock and roll, guys. We are back at the Schmuseum, but we have a visitor. We are joined here by Freddy. What's going on, dude? Welcome. I've been to visit your workshop I don't know, five, six, seven times? Oh yeah. And now you're here. Yeah, first time here. You, you have a really good setup, man. It's a big old space. And he's partly to blame for why I bought a DBS. Cause you remember when I drove your mm -hmm. manual DBS, obviously yeah. when I was out in Florida until I had bought the GT500, which mm -hmm. should be here soon. You kindly lent me that car. Um, obviously you're taking part in Petrol Hedonism Live as well. You've yeah. just flown in. Mm -hmm. I should point out right now, you've just stepped off a plane. Yeah, one hour <laughs> of sleep. I am, I am wired. I am. Ooh, well, we're good. <laughs> to keep you wired, we're going to get the cars ready in a second for the next run. And if you don't mind, jump in with me. We're going to go in the SF90. In the oh, oh, let's do this. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, we need to get some cars fired up, get everything started, and then it's time for the next run over to Nebworth House. Ooh, I'm excited. working out that you actually have a ton of right-hand drive cars. 
Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I have a Toyota Supra. I have a Mazda RX-7 and a Honda Beat, which is a little Japanese K car. Which is kind of crazy because most people from the US haven't really been in a right-hand drive car. No. Ever. No. So we'd be now a little bit confused being on the left of the car, but without a steering wheel. Well, this is actually my first time uh, on the road by myself. I mean, I'm driving with you now, but uh, to get to your place, I had to actually drive there, and this is the first time I've driven, and it takes like 10 minutes to get used to, but you're yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah. Just as the little Lotus goes by, Firefly on the flyby, then the STO, because why not? Do you know those guys? Jeez. I, I'm, I'm going to pretend that I don't right now, but... <laughs> oh. oh. Oh, they won't all go. <laughs> that thing sounds amazing. Wow. And we're just chilling at the moment. Mm -hmm. No, what I was going to say, yeah, so you, your first time ever driving on the left-hand side of the road. Yeah. Which is crazy. When did you last come to the UK? So the last time I came to the UK, I was doing a McLaren event. Uh, we were driving for the 720S launch from Woking to Geneva. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so we drove a bunch of like 570Ss and GTs for that launch. Uh, and I believe I saw you there, but uh, yeah, you, you were probably doing a billion different things. The days of the Geneva Motor Show was a madhouse just running around. Oh, yeah. Like everywhere. So yeah. this is where we go into electric, right? Mm hmm. Well, apparently we're going a bit quick at the highway speed. Are, yeah, are you? Now we're electric. Okay. So this feels wrong. This just feels wrong. And it's, it's actually quite interesting. There we go. Full electric and it will stay electric. Oh. But it's gentle and civilized. It really is. Not like this thing. This pink and yellow no. V10. Yeah. Noisy. I'm, I'm joking. There we go. It's it's just, that that's a lot. There's a lot happening there. <laughs> it's, it's funny. Whenever you put somebody at the wheel of a Lamborghini, they just become a Lamborghini driver. Yes. And just all of a sudden, mm -hmm. it's like. The last four gears cease to exist. You're you're <laughs> right there. That happens. Uh huh. <laughs> Without fail. No, I'm going to drive this. I, to be honest, we'll go in performance to keep the engine running because we're, uh, who knows what we're going to be doing with it later, but kind of cool. Kind of bright right now with both the uh, STO and the Elise behind us. Absolutely. For this drive up, we've got about 20 minutes to go to get. How uh, surreal is it for you to, to have a convoy of your own cars going to this oh, event where crazy. people come to see it? It's absolutely crazy. You know, we've done a couple of like Euro tours and trips where we've taken a few of the cars out. Like I did a tour with my three Black Series cars last year with mm -hmm. the G63. I've done a few trips over to the Nürburgring with a couple and it's always like for me it's completely mad to like to step back for a second and think about what we're doing. But yeah. I think so much more fun comes from owning these kind of cars by other people driving them, driving them together yeah. and going to places to share them with people. Absolutely. So like, I love doing events like this and giving everybody the opportunity to come down and see the cars. And yeah. We're going to be doing some fun stuff with some of them over the weekend here as well. I mean, just think about this. This might be the first time somebody ever gets to see this car and it might be the only time they get to see the, you know, some of these cars. It's true. It's true. Like, just, I don't know, these are massive feats of engineering. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a thousand horsepower. Not not that we can do all that much with it right here. Drop down some gears and give you like a, a two second taster of second gear. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the glove box opens. I think, I think it's, it's because I opened it before. <laughs> it wasn't but quite close. That, that is. Uh, that is spicy. That it's is ridiculous. It's yeah. absolutely ridiculous. And it pulls on and on and on mm -hmm. at very high speeds like that. So one of the things I like about this, which you probably also like about your 675, is that you don't need to be going Mach 10 to actually enjoy it. Yeah. This is quite characterful mm -hmm. if you're shifting mid-range. Mm -hmm. 675 does that really well also. But this is like, the reason I'm kind of dating this car, um, I drove up earlier in my, my first ever mm -hmm. Shmima Beale. This is like my daily Shmima Beale. Yeah. This is the car that, the ride is soft, it's comfy, it's just a nice place to be. It's it's wonderful. Yeah, it's really, really pleasant. What we have now, though, by the way, mm -hmm. is one of the best tunnels anywhere, oh. ever. Um, Are we going to be children? We're going to be children. Okay.
Yeah. 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 This is like a pussycat in comparison to that. It's, <laughs> it's so crazy. We've made it back. Here we are. This is where we go carefully mm -hmm. with the low cars across the, uh, the fairgrounds. There's actually a whole load more stuff here than there was when we left. Oh yeah. <laughs> Little squeeze there is an SVJ just over there. Is that like a Polo or something in front of you that's uh, way lower than your Ferrari is? A polo convertible is way lower than the Ferrari. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> normal stuff. And there's a Maserati sliding around sideways. Yep, yep. All normal. Mm -hmm. I need to work out which car is going to park where. Okay. That's an interesting one for me. Do you know what? We're going to go straight in. Straight in there. I know yep. where we're going. We'll make this work, and then we'll start the chaos. There are all these pegs for our uh, marquees, so I'm like, I don't want to run into one of those. You want me to spot you? That would be okay. I got, I got them all. Got them all in my sight lines. Wonderful. I hope. That super <laughs> wide-angle lens. Oh my goodness. For the moment, we will back this in here, hoping that the parking sensors will start pinging away if I'm going to hit something. Yeah, that'll do. Right, let's go and hop out. And awesome, thank you for the ride. My pleasure. Thanks for coming along. Mm -hmm. Bing, 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 bing. So a lot, of, lot, of, lot of bings and bongs. It likes to do that, and then? And now we're in EV mode to do... Yeah. How, how do you know if the car's <laughs> off? We're going to work out a magic plan here to fit the Elise and the 675 in this corner so that we can have nine cars underneath the awning that we have here, which means we need a slight reposition of the LT to get it closer to the pillars. So go straight, turn that way. Well, check this out. We've done quite well here. We we're only expecting to get eight of the cars underneath the awning. We've managed to get, well, eight so far with the gap where I'm standing for the other two. The colors are nicely spread out. The different brands are nicely spread out. Ferrari and Lambo, the two Astons are opposite. I say brands are spread out when we've got the two Black Series side by side. We'll make an exception there. We squeezed in the Elise and the V8 Vantage in those extra slots towards the end. And now we need to head back in the Cupra again to go pick up the missing two. We've got a Senna and a Ford GT to bring over next. It is a little bit busier than it was earlier, but I've got the Senna right alongside on a fairly congested bit of motorway, at least the sun has popped through, driving in another very special car. We started with the first ever of the Schmimobiles, the Vantage Roadster. We then went up to the daily Schmimobile with the SF90, and now we have what I think I can call the most iconic of the Schmimobiles. Yes, the Ford GT and the Senna have always been a bit of a duo together in the collection, having arrived literally a night apart from one another a couple of years ago. So we're back in the tunnel. This is the car that I took on that adventure around the US. It's always felt a little bit more personal, if I can say that. The whole story behind it. The Senna is obviously a very special car, but the GT has always been, I don't know, something else, something else. Anyway, slightly further back, we have Brad Zabar and we have the Lusso. Although with this traffic, it's not quite the same, right? Even still, remember we do have the US Krapovich exhaust on this car at the moment which does need a fix at some point. It's very complicated, that whole side of things with this car, but there's not a whole lot I can do about it, this whole part supply, as I always talk about. Anyway, following the Senna this afternoon, that view in front of me, unfortunately not a view whereby we can really put the foot down at all, but still, that thing just looks so wild. It's kind of funny to see the wing position like that so far back as well. So we uh, head past pair of these together on the road. They've been the dynamic duo of the last, well, nearly four years now. Hard to believe I've owned these two for nearly four years. Time flies by. Anyway, it's the last little stretch here. Hopefully it's not going to be too busy up ahead of us because we'd like to get all the cars in, get them lined up properly on the stand, and get ready to see the full display, hopefully without incident, between here and our final destination. We've arrived back and we're driving past a whole lot of deer a whole lot of deer, which are clearly scared of loud noises, even though I'm being super slow and quiet on both sides of us to get over towards the showgrounds. 
Wow, that's kind of cool, actually. Anyway, we'll get around and we'll probably go and see quite a lot more cars here now than there were earlier. We're back. We need to align the Ford GT, but let's get the center into place first. A little bit of a turn that way. Now straight. We're gonna have a tiny bit more turn when it's just a little bit further back. It is quickly getting towards the end of the day, but we have managed mission success. We have the 10 Schmimobiles here in our paddock. We've got Lusso as well because we realized we actually need a way to get home. Plus we have the Abarth here. And in fact, opposite, this is the enclosure that features a few cars from Zach's garage, the Koenigsegg Regera that I've driven with Zach as well, the Lamborghini Miura, the Kuntash that's been to visit the Schmuseum and a few other cool things that are around and about. But this is pretty crazy. I'm not gonna lie, a little bit surreal to have this many of the cars at a location that isn't my garage. Took some logistics, took some organizing. We've still got a little bit of cleaning up and tidying and things to do. And I want to mention as well that we still have a few of the Tarmac Works Mini GT models of the Schmimobiles, including the Ford GT, plus we've got the G63s and we've got the Taycans as well, plus more to come in the future. But these are really, really cool. Perfect spec match to my car, I'll leave it in the packaging just for the time being, but I'll pop the link for those down below if you're keen to find out a little bit more and grab one before you can, because of course the Senna and the GT500 have sold out. Those are completely gone. For now though, 10 cars together, if not necessarily all mine, because technically the Lotus belongs to a friend and just the custodian of it for the time being. But we made it here. We made it here to Petrol Hedonism Live. It's going to be an amazing weekend. There's so much going on. It was super cool to see Freddie, to catch up with him. Also, Eddie X and a few other guys that are here for this event. Yeah, good times ahead. But that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your support. As always, guys, look forward to seeing some of you here. And I'll catch up with you again very soon. Cheers.